Hello, Wolfpack, and welcome to Art History in Virtual Reality. Today, we're going to be looking at two paintings, Edvard Munch's The Scream and Arnold Buchlin's Isle of the Dead. It's one thing to go to a museum and see these paintings, every color and line clear against the canvas, but it's another to experience them, to take a journey into the motivations and inspirations. And for that, we have virtual reality. I won't include my commentary in this video, I'm just going to let the narrators guide you. Enjoy. The Scream is undoubtedly Edvard Munch's most famous painting. A scream whose origin remains mysterious. Is this painting a reaction to inner feelings? Or an external shock? The supernatural red, undulating lines of the sky, contribute to the feeling of anxiety that emanates from the painting. The sun went down. A bloody flamboyant sword cut open the firmament. I felt a loud scream pass through nature. The sky was blood red. The colors screamed. I painted the clouds like real blood. It's a living atom, it blows and storms are unleashed. I do not paint what I see, but what my soul has seen.
Ten years before he painted the scream, Krakatoa erupted in Indonesia. All over Europe, ashes suspended in the air gave rise to flaming sunsets. The colors were so intense, you thought they were fires. The first time he exhibited this painting, Monk did not call it the scream, but the scream of nature. I came to this world in poor health. My father did not believe that I would survive. My mother, my aunt, died of tuberculosis. As did my sister, Sophie. My brother had weak lungs. He died of pneumonia. I live surrounded by death. When, in 1889, Monk saw this Peruvian mummy, its hands and feet tied, its mouth wide open, and hands clasped on its temples. He was gripped. Strange that even in death, we have to shut ourselves off from outside noise. Scream is a part of a series of paintings, The Freeze of Life. Monk explores the powerful feelings that accompany any existence. The same situation is used to express loneliness, or to stage a host of ghostly automatons advancing toward their destiny with no other escape than to be crushed by the weight of society.
The symphony we're listening to, composed by Sergei Rachmaninoff, was inspired by an eerie painting by Arnold Berkeley, The Isle of the Dead. A pure product of the late Romantic period, this late 19th century piece of art goes against the grain of a world at the height of its industrial revolution. Berkeley treats the island as a territory belonging to death, turning it into a new representation of hell, a zone of wandering for wandering souls. The island is there, unchanging, the final destination of the voyage. It awaits us. is the same for everyone. Since the dawn of time, the terrifying question is the same for all civilizations. What comes after death? Is there even anything at all? Oh Lord, please let there be something. destination coming into sight. Mankind has always told tales to make it acceptable. Like the tale of Charon, the ferryman who rowed souls from one bank of the river Styx to the other, from life to the afterlife. finishing his painting, a widow named Marie Berner paid him a visit. She was about to remarry and wanted a painting that would be conducive to musing. She was the one who suggested that he had a rowboat and a silhouette in a white shroud. Is it someone in limbo between life and death? Or rather, a dead person who does not yet know it? Marie Berner hands her loved one over to the island. He has not entirely left the world of the living, but he has not yet reached the world of the dead. The painting freezes an interlude, thus suspending the inevitable. <laughs> 